In this video, we're going to look at the best gas canister stove and fuel combination for use in cold weather. We will also look at a number of tips and tricks that you can use to get the most out of your stove as the temperature drops. If you're interested, keep watching. Before we begin, I would like to thank those viewers who commented on some of my previous videos and prompted me to make this video. Okay, so what is the issue with gas canister stoves in cold weather? Well, it's commonly been accepted that gas canister stoves will not work as the temperature drops. And there is some truth to this. Older style stoves and butane fuel do not work well in cold temperature. However, today we have much better designed and engineered stoves as well as better fuel mix that can take us down well below freezing. So it is the fuel that failed in these older style stoves. So let's start there. Let's take a look at the different fuel options. All right, so there are basically three types of fuel available on the market today for use with gas canister stoves. There's straight up butane. There is a variation known as isobutane. And then there is a winter mix, which is isobutane mixed with propane. You can see I only have two canisters. I don't have any straight up butane. I've elected to go with just isobutane or the winter mixture, as I feel that butane doesn't offer the advantages that the isobutane does. Now, there is one other fuel that you can use with your gas canister stoves, and that is the traditional propane cylinder. And we'll talk about how you can use these with your stoves in a few moments time. So to understand how these canisters work, you first understand that the fuel has been placed into these canisters under pressure, considerable amount of pressure, and under pressure that fuel remains liquid. It's not until the fuel is released from the stove that it evaporates, turns into a gaseous state, and of course that is what is burnt in your stove. So the contents are under pressure, and if the pressure for any reason drops, so does the amount of fuel reaching your stove. So what can make the pressure drop? Number one is, of course, as the tank empties for through use, so will the pressure. And as the tank empties, you'll have less and less performance at your stove. The next thing, of course, and the topic for discussion today is temperature. Temperature will play a, an Im, will have an impact on the type of fuel you have in your stove. And as temperature goes down, so does the internal pressure of the gas in, or of the fuel inside. Even with that, just using the stove can cause the temperature to drop in the cylinder. If you've ever turned your stove on and then put your hand on the canister, you'll find that it often feels colder than it did before you started. So that adds to pressure drop all by itself. All right, let's talk about how temperature impacts each of the types of fuel. Now, I don't have the butane, as I mentioned, but butane will stop vaporizing at 31 degrees Fahrenheit, known as its boiling point. Of course, the performance will start dropping long before that point. As the temperature drops, so will the pressure in a butane canister, and therefore, so will the performance. Isobutane will do better, and this will continue vaporizing down to 11 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's quite cold, and you can so you can get a lot further down than you can with straight up butane. However, like butane, pressure starts to drop as the temperature drops until you get to that point. Now, this mixture of propane and um, isobutane depends on the manufacturer. It has a couple pros and cons. However, the mixture of propane inside will take the temperature down considerably further. But again, it depends on which manufacturer and what their claims are for the lowest temperature rating. Now, I just want to bring the propane back into the picture for a second because propane is actually quite amazing. It will continue to vaporize right down to are you ready? F minus 43 degrees Fahrenheit. Literally, I don't think there is too many places on Earth where you couldn't use propane in cold temperature. Now, mind you, even as you start to get down to that temperatures, propane will start to condense or not vaporize as quickly. Still, minus 43. That's a long reason down. So why are we not all using propane with our gas canister stoves? Well, the reason is, is in order to keep the propane in its liquid state, it has to be placed in the cylinder under quite high pressures, too high for the normal cylinder will hold. That's why they have to be, the gas has to be placed in steel cylinders like this. So this one pound tank, meaning one pound of fuel, it weighs quite a bit. 
However, if you don't have a concern about weight when you're going out during the winter, maybe you're taking it out on a pulk or sled or an ATV, propane actually might be an option worth considering. All right, for the most part, I use isobutane when I go out all year round. I think it's the best balance for winter and summer use. May not have all the BTUs straight up butane has, but it will take me down to lower temperatures and that's why I choose to limit. But even this has limitations, of course. So the guideline that's recommended for using isobutane fuel is 20 degrees Fahrenheit, meaning that really you're gonna have diminishing returns even though you can go a little lower with isobutane, it's at 20 degrees where you pretty much max out the performance for the weight ratio. All right, now that we have a better understanding how the different fuels will react at the various temperatures, let's turn our attention to the stoves themselves. So there are basically three types of stove technology available on the market today. And we'll start with tr tr the traditional. And I represent that here by a very inexpensive stove that I picked up of AliExpress quite a few years ago. And I've chosen to have uh, use or demonstrated this with three different stoves, all of the remote gas canister style, just for the consistency. So the advantage of a stove like this, they're inexpensive. They're, you know, you can pick these up quite inexpensively and maybe it is all you need. However, the technology is such that there are very small jet holes in these traditional types of stove. And the issue with that, of course, is as the temperature drops, the fuel has difficulty getting through that small hole. So why not just enlarge in the hole? Well, the hole is small for a reason, and that is to limit the amount of pressure that is reaching the burner itself. If the hole was much larger than it is, you could very easily get dangerous flare-ups on your stove. So the hole has to be small in the traditional style stove. So this is not a great choice for use in cold weather. However, as I mentioned, there are some tips and tricks where you can get the most out of this type of stove. If this is what you currently have, we'll get to those in a few minutes. All right, let's put this one aside. So the next stove I'm gonna bring is my Fire Maple Polaris gas pressure regulator stove. And the regulator is at this end of the stove where it attaches to the can canister. So these are a little bit more expensive than the regular stoves, but they offer some distinct advantages over them. So so what, the way they go about this is the gas jet is actually considerably larger than it is on the traditional stove. And whereas on the traditional stove, that could cause for a danger, dangerous amount of fuel coming out of the burner, that's where the pressure regulator kicks in. So you have much better control over the pressure with the pressure regulator than you just, just relying on the whole size itself. The advantage of the larger whole side, of course, is that more fuel can get through as the temperature goes down. Now there are some other advantages to pressure regulators as well. They tend to maintain a nice even pressure over the lifespan of the cylinder that, or the cartridge that you're using. So even as the uh, canister starts to diminish in the amount of fuel has in it, you can get some pretty consistent performance right down to the end. So this will take you down to a much lower temperature than the traditional stove will. However, it still has some limitations. All right, so let's bring in the third style of stove. And the third style stove I have is also from Fire Maple. This is the Fire Maple Blade, Blade 2, I should say. Um, by the way, I have reviews on both the Fire Maple Polaris and this stove, if you're interested in seeing them. Again, it is a remote gas canister stove. Its basic technology is similar to the first stove I showed you in that it does not have a pressure regulator and therefore relies on the small jet hole to, to keep the too much gas from coming through at any given time. So how is this stove better in cold weather? Well, this stove has something that the other stoves do not. It has a preheat tube right here. So the way this preheat tube works is that the fuel will go first through this hole, up through the preheat tube, be exposed to the heat from any flame on top of the burner, making it vaporize even more so, and then it will go to the uh, back into the stove and up through the burner so that it is preheated before it gets to the burner itself. So yes, that's an advantage, but of course that alone is take us, that's only true if the gas is flowing in the first place. So in order to get the most from the stove, this stove can 
offer you something that the other two stylus stoves cannot do, and that is that you can invert your cylinder upside down. In doing so, you do not have to rely on the gas vaporizing through its natural boiling point before it reaches the stove. The fuel itself will run through the tube in a liquid form rather than in the gaseous state. And as it does so, it enters in through the preheat tube is the preheat tube, which is being warmed by any flame on top of here, vaporizes the gas, which then flows down and up through. Therefore, you get your gas being heated or your fuel being heated and turned into gas. And that's going to take you down to a much lower temperature than the other stoves. In fact, stoves with preheat tubes like this can be used down right down to zero degrees Fahrenheit. So, you know, it's not really, really cold, but it's not bad at all. Most people cannot believe when you tell them you can use a stove down to this point. Now the other, or to that temperature, the other advantage that this type of stove offers is in inverting the canister, as I mentioned, allows you to use all the fuel in the canister because you're not relying on pressure to make the uh, fuel exit through and run through the tube. So turning it upside down and maybe holding it slightly above means liquid fuel will continue to run down through this tube until the canister is completely empty. What that means, of course, is that, that there's better fuel economy. You're getting more out of your canister right down to the last drop. All right, so I guess the lesson to be taken here is that if you're currently in the market for a new stove, then the two styles that I would recommend looking at, of course, is the one any style stove that has a preheat tube like this one or has a pressure regulator like this one. Now, if you're not in the market and the stove you have currently is a traditional style stove, there are some tips and tricks that you can use to get the most out of this as the temperature drops. So regardless of which stove you have, there are things that you can do to get the best performance out of it as the temperature drops. So let's break this down into three categories. First is the fuel. So choose the fuel to match the temperature. Butane is a great fuel for summertime, not so good once the temperature starts to drop. You'll want to move over to isobutane. That'll take you down to a much colder temperature. Even better in cold temperatures is to use a winter mix of propane and isobutane. Or of course, if weight is not an issue, you can use the straight up propane cylinders. All right, now when it comes to keeping your canister warm, there are a couple of things you can do. One is keep it inside of your coat and allow your body heat to do the job or inside of your sleeping bag if you're there overnight. You can also prevent heat loss from the canister by setting it on some type of an insulative layer to keep heat from being drawn into the surface below. Now you can also warm your canister up and bring it back up to a better operating temperature. One method that has been demonstrated is to place the canister in a pan of warm water. Not necessarily hot, just warm. It actually doesn't take a whole lot of heat or warmth to get the gas flowing again. Another one is to use some of those chemical uh, hand warmers that you've often carry, people often carry on them to warm the canister up from underneath. Now the only thing I would say there is be careful about overheating your canister. There is a risk. I don't know so much about from explosion, but certainly when you go to use the stove, you can get a dangerous overpressure and a great flare up at the stove. So avoid doing that. You don't need a whole lot of heat to uh, get the gas flowing again. Now, beyond that, choose the right stove. So if all you have is a traditional, regular, non-regulated, no a stove without a, a, a preheat tube, then these tips and tricks I just shared will help you even more. But if you have a choice, choose either a pressure regulated stove or even better, a stove with a preheat tube so that you can invert your canister and actually use the fuel in its liquid form. Now there's one other thing that I want to share with you, and that is there is a DIY means of heating your canister. It's not a preheat tube, but it's kind of works on the same principle. And I will share the link to a video where I saw this. Basically what the person did was to take a thin piece of copper strip 
uh, attach it to the side of the canister with a rubber band and bend it so that the top of the copper strip is touching the flames on, from the stove. The heat will travel down the copper strip and warm the cylinder up from that side. And actually we'll demonstrate that when we get outside, but I just want to give credit to the person whose video I saw them do this in first. All right, why don't we get outside while the temperatures are good and cold and demonstrate some of these tips. All right, I'm currently on my back deck getting ready to do my demonstrations. Uh, it is currently 12 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 11 degrees Celsius. I did try to do this yesterday. We have a, a polar vortex giving us a cold snap and it was minus 25 degrees Celsius yesterday, but with the wind, uh, it was much, much colder with the wind chill. I couldn't get this done. It was just blowing out the flame of the one unit that actually worked, which is the propane. So uh, it's warmer today, but I think it's still within reason for this demonstration. So let's start. I, what I have set up here is propane, isobutane, and the winter mix of propane isobutane. So the propane has a bit of a larger burner. It looked funny if I put one of the small ones on there. So let's just turn that one on first, see if it's going to work. These have been out for more than 24 hours now, so they're cold. All right, get my lighter lit. That lit right up. Now, I won't say it's burning at a high intensity. Actually, it is pretty darn good. All right, let's move that one to the back. Isobutane. Could not get this lit yesterday when I tried. Let's see what happens today. It is going. So at minus 11, my isobutane is still working, but that's, that's open wide and it's not burning very intently. Okay, that's the propane isobutane mix, and you can see that's burning much more intently, but you'll also notice that it's flaring up with some yellow. So there's a mixture, and what happens is the propane and the isobutane uh, tend to separate a little bit, and that's why you're going to get that. That can be an issue, but most uh, companies, in this case uh, Jetboil, use some type of a technology inside of their canisters to keep the, the gases or the fuels mixed together. All right, so as you can see, maybe burning a little yellow, but it is burning more intently. Let me turn that one off. My isobutane is way, way down. I don't know how long it would take to get water to go to a boil, and that usually works pretty good, but we're gonna do a trick in a minute to see if we can't get this to burn better. So I'll turn that off. And now the propane will turn off. Propane is burning well. I wanted to make sure I included this in the demonstration. Well, this is the Fire Maple Polaris. I had said that pressure regulated stoves tend to do a bit better than regular stoves, but maybe not as good as stoves that have a preheat tube. Well, let's just put that to the test. So again, I'm using propane. I've got my larger cylinder, or not propane, isobutane. I have my larger cylinder out here, so let's see what we can do. That's better. I couldn't hear it, but then again, I forgot that this runs very quietly. Okay, that is wide open. Actually, that's pretty good. You know, it was better than the regular gas canister stove, but it's still not running really hot at wide open. That would really be a torch if it was. But it is working. All right, I'm going to demonstrate three of the tips or tricks for warming your cylinder up, assuming that it is too cold to operate. Uh, it's going to take a bit of time, maybe. We'll have a look. First off, I'm going to use the smaller cylinder here. Now, you can see that I've got it set up with this DIY alternative to a preheat tube. I'm not going to use that yet. I'm going to have to try something else, let the cylinder cool off, then come back to doing that because I only have so many cylinders and stoves, to be honest. All right, trick number one. I have a foam pad. It's one of my kneeling pads under underneath the stove. That's just to prevent further heat loss into whatever surface you have it on. Uh, make a big deal? Maybe not, but when I'm using this, I think it will. This is one of those chemical hand warmers where you open it up at the package and it warms up. It's not real warm, but I'm going to put that underneath the cylinder. Now that's going to take a couple of minutes, but uh, it should work well enough. And in the other one, this is one I see recommended and demonstrated, and that is to put warm water in a bowl along with the cylinder. Now, a couple comments here. 
This is tap. Interesting. You can actually hear the gas starting to be affected by the heat. Um, this is recommended, and my comment on this is, is that uh, you have to have warm water. So if you didn't think this through the night before while you're out camping, take a insulated bottle, put hot water in it, and that's something I would recommend for staying warm at night anyway. But if you didn't do that, you're not going to have warm water to start with in the morning. So it kind of is which, which comes first. You need the stove to heat the water to heat the stove, and you, you get what I mean. All right, let's just see how much of a difference it's going to make here. So turn it on. All right. I want to see if that's going to increase. Now, I'm using a big cylinder. I only had the one small one. I tend to use these at home for demonstration purposes, testing purposes. This is, and the smaller four ounce are the ones I would carry with me in the woods. But, uh, yeah, so it would take more time for any hot water. Or, and this is not hot, this is tap warm. So the assumption is you put boiling water or very hot water in your water bottle overnight. It's probably only gonna be tap warm in the morning. So uh, that's what you have to do this with. I don't know how practical this is. It should work, well it does work, but it's, it's a matter of, is it really all that practical? It's, all right, can you see that? Nice. Yeah, that made a huge difference, all right. Now, I don't know, I'm going to turn that down, or turn it off, actually. Yep, that made a difference. All right, let's bring this one a little closer. I'm going to sight this one up. I don't know if the heater pad, the little heating pad worked yet. Actually, it worked faster than I would have thought. Yeah, okay, that's, that's working out pretty good. Quite quickly. now. The one caution I would give you when doing this is uh, don't leave that heater pad under there too long. You don't want to create excessive amount of heat and pressure buildup in your cylinder. I don't know that there's a huge risk of explosion. Those pads don't get all that hot, especially if you're venting your gas off by using the stove. But uh, you don't want flare-ups. So with a lot of pressure, you can get a lot of fuel moving through the stove and it will flare up. So, yep. Now it's not, that's open wide. It normally would be a lot more intense of a, a flame than that, but that's not bad at all. I'm gonna to have to let this one cool off. Okay, I wanted to demonstrate the DIY preheater. It's not a tube, it's a piece of copper pipe. I'll give you some close-ups of that so you can see. Uh, very easy to do. Again, I'm gonna credit Chris Arconi. I think I've got that right. I'll certainly be putting it on the screen and putting the link to the original video in the video description. But uh, all I did is I had some short length of copper pipe, half inch copper pipe in the uh, in my collection. And I cut a section off and split it with my um, uh, angle grinder. It was easy enough. You could do that with a Dremel tool. You could do it with a hacksaw, it, but uh, you know, you have to keep it straight, of course. Um, then I took one half and just pounded it down. Actually, one half was, well, one piece of it was larger than the other, so I took the smaller of the two pieces. Copper is quite malleable. It's not hard to work with. You can heat it a little bit if you want with a torch or something to get it easier to work with, but it's really not even necessary. Hammer it on a hard surface, and this is what I ended up with. Now, this is just a silicone band around the bottom. So the concept here is the stove will light. It may not light with a lot of intensity, but the flame will come in contact with the copper, and copper is great at transferring heat Heat very quickly down the side of the tank. A uh, few cautions here. Uh, one would be, obviously, one is, is don't let it overheat because once you put a pot on top, remember you have even more heat being reflected back down, especially as the water in the pot starts to come up to temperature, more heat will be reflected back down. So yeah, that's my caution. Now the stove I'm using is one of those little micro stoves. So the flame is very intense and has a small central hotspot. So it's a bit of a challenge to get this to reach into the flame itself, but uh, it might work with a stove that has a larger surface area, maybe a little bit better. Let's get her lit up and see what happens. All right, it's lit. 
it's not very intense as you can see. That's wide open. I don't want to completely obstruct the flame. Obviously, if I was looking to cook or boil water, you don't want the flame obstructed by your uh, piece of copper. So there's only a tiny bit of it actually touching the copper pipe, or yes, touching the copper pipe or in the flame. And it will take a few seconds for the heat to travel down, the heat to be absorbed into the gas. So we'll just watch it. If I find it's going longer than uh, I would hope, I'll let uh, maybe I'll speed it up a little bit. All right, I'm turning it up. Max open, that's max open right there. So what I'm seeing is it is not at its full intensity if I was at room temperature, but even as I watch and as I speak, I can hear the intensity increasing. So heat is being transferred down to the tank. It's certainly not getting colder, it is getting warmer. Oh yeah, okay, now it's really starting to get intense. Oh, there was a little bit more I could open this up. It's just not showing any more in flame, or flames, not getting any more intense. Yeah, just the very last quarter inch of the copper pipe is actually in contact with the flame, so another stove you might get more of it into the flame for more contact surface area. Okay, that is that's pretty much full intensity that it would be in at room temperature. So, okay, it took a second or two to work, but uh, it worked out very well. I don't know if I had said this prior to doing this test. I waited 20 minutes for it to, the tank to cool off again after having put that little hand warmer under. Okay, I have one more demonstration I want to share with you. All right, the last demonstration I want to do is with a stove that has a preheat tube. And again, this is my fire maple stove. And... Uh, I left this canister inside, so this is at room temperature for inside the house, and I did that for a reason, because if you start out with a very cold canister, then uh, you're not going to get the flame that you need to warm up the preheat tube, to warm up the fuel, to make it work that much faster. So had I been left this out overnight or was in my tent or wherever, and this had gotten cold, I would wanted to use one of those earlier tricks for get some preheating. Now it doesn't have to be very warm, it just has to be not really cold, if that makes any sense. So give it a little bit of warmth, maybe under your coat for a little while or in your sleeping bag if, you're, if it's the night, or one of the other tricks I showed you before you move on to this. Now here's the reason. Had this been a white gas stove, the, then you could do it right from uh, full cold. And the reason being is they're designed that you release a little bit of liquid fuel in through the burner into a little cup that sits underneath the burner itself and underneath the preheat tube. And of course, their preheat tubes tend to go right over the top. And what you would do is you would light that, and that would just sit and turn the tennis, your, your tank back off, the fuel flow, and that would sit there and burn freely and preheat the entire stove. Then you would turn or you open up your fuel and let it run through so that you get your preheating that way. These stoves don't have them. Most of them, I don't know of any that do, at least none of the ones I have, have a preheat. If I was, this was cold and I flipped it, uh, I would get fuel spilling out onto the surface potentially and you don't and you don't want that to happen. So this is the better way to do it. Now, just uh, as I do this, a little bit of a hack I want to show you. This won't work with every gas canister stove, but it will work with this one. Because once you flip the tank upside down, that's what you want to leave it, upside down. So it's liquid fuel running through the tube. How do you keep it upside down? Well, a lot of people say, don't worry about it. Just, you know, put a rock or whatever there to keep it upside down. And with some stoves you can purchase, they actually have a little mount that uh, will hold the canister upside down. I, I don't have one of those. I'm sure probably there's somebody that has 3D printing uh, designs that can make those pretty easily. But here's one that I came up with off of internet. This is a binder clip. If I remove the two handles from the binder clip, now it's only going to work with this type of attachment point. If it's a round one that covers the entire circle, you're not going to be able to do it. But I can do this. There's one in. 
put the other one in on the other side. Now what I have is a tank that'll sit upside down. Be better with a smaller tank, but it will work like this as well. Now that I twist this all over the place, let's get it started. All right. So like I said, this is warm. Now it's cooling off as I talk too much, but it is warm that this should work no problem to light. So let's light her up. Lit right up. It is cooling off though. So I'm just going to let that run for a minute so that the preheat tube starts to warm up. before flipping the canister over. So I think earlier I called this the Fire Maple Blade 2. This is not the Blade 2. The Blade 2 is titanium. This is stainless steel. This is the Fire Maple FM118. And if you watch my review, I actually compare the two of them, the titanium one and the stainless steel one side by side to uh, show you how, what the similarities and minor differences are between the two of them. All right, that appears to be heating up. Uh, do this cautiously. Test it is, is a good way of saying it to see what's gonna happen as it goes to liquid fuel as opposed to gas. All right, that worked. I don't know that I have it. All right, I think the camera is picking it up slightly. What I'm getting is little tiny flare-ups. You can probably see a little burst of yellow flame that weren't there before. And that's because of the liquid fuel uh, not getting completely turned to gas. There you go. Now we're running on liquid. Now this is where you want to be cautious. I'm going to turn that down a little bit. So that is running in liquid mode. And the warmer the stove gets, the more efficient it gets, and eventually it will turn back to blue flame. There it's starting to occur. But even now, this is not heat that I would waste. This is heat that I would uh, put a pot on top of. It may be a big yellow flame, but it's still Good heat. Yeah, I can see the flame starting to return to blue around the base now. Maybe not as efficient as a white gas stove, but uh, you can take this down to a lot lower temperatures than you can isobutane in a regular stove for sure. All right, we'll call that good for the demonstration and we'll take this to a wrap up. All right, let's wrap this video up. So the answer to the question is yes, you can use your gas canister stove in cold weather. Now you'll get the most from it if you use the tips and or tricks that I shared with you. And to start with, use the best fuel for the temperature that you're going to be using your stove at. Keep your canister warm or slightly warm it up or gently warm it up. And choose the best stove that you can design for use at that temperature range as well. Now, I know someone's going to ask, Mark, what about white gas stoves or multi-fuel stoves? I would love to be able to do a video on that. I only have two stoves that operate off of white gas right now, an old uh, Sevea and an old Coleman stove. If I get my hands on a few more stoves so that I can get some more experience with them, maybe I'll do a video on that as well in the future. Okay, I think this is a good time to open it up to you. What tips and or tricks do you have for using gas canister stoves in cold weather? Please put all of that in the comment section below. If you have any questions, put that in the comment section below. I'll be putting most of the information I shared with you in the video's description so you can reference it later. All right, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.